So just to give a high level overview, um, and hopefully, you know, this, this workshop is really geared towards newer um, WordPress and ACF users that are kind of just getting their toes wet. And I wanted to cover kind of a 10,000 foot overview of WordPress data modeling and go over some of the definitions and concepts that are critical to what we'll be going over. Um, and I also have a visual to follow this slide as well, but um, the three kind of main uh, data models that WordPress often comes up in common terminology is custom post types or CPTs, um, taxonomies and custom fields or often called post meta fields. Um, it can be confusing with a lot of the <laughs> intermingled um, usage, but, um, and so uh, custom post types, uh, custom post types um, extend WordPress's default posts and pages, um, allowing you to create your own content types. Um, this is a huge, uh, powerful feature. And when you go to build some pretty complex um, sites, you'll find that um, a post and a page are often uh, limiting, and that's kind of when you'll reach for a custom post type. Um, basically, anything that doesn't fit into a post or a page, um, it gives you, when you create a custom post type, you'll get a tailored, and you can tailor the experience um, ultimately to what you want to allow or not allow. And uh, especially, we'll go over this in the demo of how ACF um, enables you to a register a post type um, right from the UI and toggle on and off a lot of the features that are related to uh, registering custom post types. Um, of course, you can do it programmatically and register these with code, but ACF makes it so painless and easy to do it. There's no, um, yeah, if you don't have to go into code, then why, why, why not stay in the UI? Um, taxonomies. Um, often called terms or tags or categories allow you to group your content. So um, if you're already kind of familiar with posts, like WordPress is a, has de the default post types or include like pages and posts and posts um, have categories and tags by default. Um, so these taxonomies offer a way to classify and re uh, group related content across different post types, um, which again, enhances the, the content management experience that WordPress excels at. So, and then finally, custom post meta fields. These allow you to attach details and meta information to your content. So um, whether that's, you know, existing uh, default post types like pages and posts, you can attach fields and post meta to those or to even to your custom post types as well. And all of these, these three items here, custom post types, taxonomies and custom fields are all um, easily registered within the ACF UI. Um, so I'll pause there. I see a few questions already popping up in the q and I'm going to, let's see, what are the rationale for using cases for the different taxonomies when to use category versus tag versus custom taxonomy? Um, let's see. Um, so with, that's a, yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty complex uh, question, but I don't know that I could explain it necessarily. I mean, I know categories, um, if you want to have a parent-child relationship, um, allow for that hierarchical um, organization. Um, and terms is a little more of a free-flowing taxonomy um, that you can assign to your custom post types. That's probably the the best explanation I have off the top of my head right now, but uh, maybe I can circle back to that if I if I think of anything else to clarify later on. Um, let's see, Jeremy Pollock, just to be clear on the screen, data modeling 
We're seeing capabilities that are available in WordPress today and not specific to ACF. Um, so actually all the stuff on the screen are available in WordPress. I mean, in order to extend and create these custom post types or custom taxonomies or custom fields, you have to reach for code. Um, all the, there's, you know, APIs there for it, but ACF makes it simple and elegant to just create these and assign them even, you know, with the UI, which I think will be clear when I jump into, uh, demonstrating kind of some of this modeling, um, which we'll be doing today using a car, cars kind of, uh, automotive selling site. <laughs> I'm calling it auto, uh, trade or auto uh, car finder, which actually I think I have it pulled up here, um, which is also ACF, a little Easter egg. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, this functionality is available in WordPress through APIs that you can extend with code, but yeah, ACF makes it super easy, um, to do it in the UI and yeah, even there's APIs to also extend and do it in code as well with ACF. And this is kind of a visual of, to reiterate kind of what I just uh, went over, but I just wanted to lay the foundation of what will kind of, when I jump into uh, creating a demo site, um, the cars will be setting up some uh, cars custom post type. And then we'll have these three taxonomies we'll associate with cars, models, conditions, and manufacturers. And then we'll register uh, meta fields for vehicle vehicle details, which will attach to the car's post type as well. Um, yeah, so I think um, that's probably, yeah, I think we probably can jump into setting up a demonstration site. Um, yeah, let me go back here, actually. All right. So I'm actually going to hop over to a WordPress installation that I set up with local. Um, and just to give kind of a lay of the land here, um, these are the plugins I have installed and activated right now. Um, just for this demonstration, I'm using the advanced custom fields free uh, plugin from the wordpress.org repo, which really gives us probably about 95% of the functionality um, I'll be demonstrating today. Um, so you don't really need pro and I'll try to point out the one or two items, which I'll, you know, I'll activate pro later on towards the end. So we can kind of see the little small um, things that I added to use uh, for pro. And then I have this demo ACF plugin. This is on GitHub as well. Uh, this is a plugin I maintain that is kind of just something I encourage you to fork and has kind of um, some simple logic for things like ACF blocks and ACF JSON syncing, which um, you can find resources on ACF uh, or advancedcustomfields.com. But yeah, so this is just kind of a very simple plugin that store, can store some of our uh, ACF registered items um, and just gives it kind of an easier way to organize and commit it and get it up in the GitHub repo, which I'll show at the end as well in the final code base. Um, I'm using the Gutenberg plugin because there is, I'll show you a small form that I use. Um, it's just a couple fields on the front end and the quickest way there is an experimental feature of a forms block in Gutenberg. So it was just kind of a quick means to display a form on the page. And I'll highlight that when I get to it. And then I'm using the icon block, um, which is just a must use. I just wanted to have some icons displaying in certain areas. And so, yeah, I just used that to get some SVGs uh, going. So, and then as far as a theme, um, I've created a custom theme here, uh, which, yeah, it's kind of uh, simple and bare bones. I'll show what we have right now. This is just kind of displaying some placeholder posts um, on an archive page. Uh, nothing too fancy yet, um, but that's where I want to 
start building and planning our site. So hopefully you can see this other, uh, yeah, other window I have open. This is the final um, site, Auto Car Finder. And this is will be shared um, probably in the chat and on the last slide as well. But this is the ultimately the end product that we're creating. Um, we're listing our car types here. And we also have, we're using some of the, the categorization with taxonomies to show used cars and new cars. So that's the end product, but I'm jumping ahead. So... When it comes to kind of this organization of creating this automotive car sales site, it takes some planning when you when you want to work with custom post types and taxonomies, and it helps to kind of even go to pen and paper and just you know plan these out because Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you can use posts and pages. The, those may have sufficient details of how you want to build things out. Um, but oftentimes, you know, we'll, we'll be registering a car's post type as our content type. So, um, but let's jump in to ACF and here we have post types. And I'm actually going to bring this over here on my other screen so I can reference that. And we're going to create our cars post type. And let me just see here. I want to match, make sure I match all these settings because it's a lot, lot to, a lot of stuff for registering. But so we're going to create our cars post type um, and ACF really makes this easy, you know, car is the singular, um, post type key, we're going to use car, actually it auto populates for us if we just tab through. And as far as this is where things you can toggle on these advanced features, and I'm going to go into some of these right now as I register this post type, but um, Oftentimes, if you're just quickly registering a post type, that may be all you need and you can just save your changes and move along. But let's dive into some of the advanced configuration options. We are going to, under advanced settings, this is general, this is the supports declaration. So this is saying kind of some of the fields we want in our editorial page. So like if you go to create a new post, do we want, you know, author, excerpt, you know, all these items um, visible when you're at editing. And so this allows you to toggle these on and off. So we're actually going to turn off the editor here and we'll leave title and featured image. And then some of these other th items we're going to leave alone. The labels you can customize as well. These are all the kind of throughout the, the edit screens of how you want the to read. Um, so we're going to leave those alone. Those defaults are pretty good. And then for visibility, I'm trying to remember, oh, we're just going to add a little icon to distinguish in the admin area here. And this uses uh, dash icons to declare that. And I think that's it for that screen. Yep. URLs. Um, this is setting kind of the slugs and permalinks that you may or may not want to override for your custom post type. Um, again, ACF gives you some pretty, you know, simple, sane defaults here. Um, I don't think I have anything. Oh, yeah, we do use a custom archive here, which we're going to say cars. Um, and then just to step through the rest of these screens, I don't have any other changes here. These are the defaults, but you can also modify the permissions for uh, different roles that can access some of this information. And then the show and rest API, um, oftentimes you just want to leave that on because that helps with um, a lot of, uh, yeah, I, I It'll just be useful to leave it on, but you know, you can consider uh, turning it off if you don't need the REST API integration for any of your uh, post types. 
So I'm going to save that. Oh, and it's telling me uh, validation here, this field. One field requires host type key. Oh, I think because... Car, cars. Oh, maybe because I had previously, I think I have one in the trash right now. Let's try that again, yeah. It's already used by another post type, okay. So we'll call this, uh, well, car two. Actually, no, I don't wanna. <laughs> uh, let me open this and just remove this from the trash so it doesn't get in our way. Delete permanently, there we go. Sorry about that, close that. Okay, now, that's interesting, I should save. Unless, oh, unless I still have it in my JSON syncing. JSON, let's get this out of here. Delete, there we go. That was, again, as I mentioned, this demo ACF plugin syncs some of these settings in the background. So we'll remove that and there we go. Sorry about that. So we've just res registered our cars post type and over on the side here, we can now see all cars, add new car. And if we go to add new car, you just have a title and a featured image option here. Fine and dandy, good start. Um, and of course, when I save that again, it saves it back into this JSON sync uh, folder. There it is again, after I just deleted it. But so that, is registering a post type plain and simple really um you can do that again with code but it's a lot of manual uh code writing and error prone obviously um whereas this allows you to easily have it right here in the dashboard and even sync it in the background with json syncing so um so we have our cars post type and I've actually, you know, I went ahead and cheated and created a bunch of cars for us, which I'll go back to. But next, we want to, let's create our taxonomies that we want to associate with our cars post type. And again, this will allow us to group cars or, you know, models, manufacturers, or conditions like, you know, if we're going to have a used car or a new car. Uh, we can organize it there for conditions and then uh, manufacturers like, you know, Ford, Nissan, what, you know, all those. So we're going to go ahead and create a taxonomy. And let me pull up my cheat sheet over here. We'll start with conditions. That's a pretty simple one. Um, We're going to condition, uh, I think we'll leave that yeah, condition that's auto populated. And then here we assign our post type that we just registered. It shows up as car because we want to associate that with our car post type. Um, and then I think that is it. Let me make sure we can toggle on the advanced configuration again and Again, this gives you a lot more advanced options. I don't believe I changed anything here. Tech Lab URLs. Yeah, this is kind of similar. Um, again, if you do this all in code, you have to account for all these items. Um, yeah, so that is conditions. We can save that. And I'll probably get you up another message. Let me get rid of all this stuff. <laughs> or else I keep running into this. Let's see. Delete all these. Um, and post types, that should be fine. Taxonomies, get rid of all these. So we don't keep getting these validation errors. Sorry about that. I had previously set up a lot of this. So, um, and then make sure we delete these, empty the trash. Feel 
field groups trash and we'll empty this okay back to back to square one all right so taxonomies you can close this out sorry about that and now we can save our conditions without validation errors and go back to taxonomies and there's our condition so if we come back up here we now see under cars we have conditions uh, taxonomy associated with it and I had already gone ahead again to create these new cars and a used car and assign some of our information so that we'll have a working demo at the end. Um, but let's go ahead and create the rest of the taxonomies. There's two more we want to create. Um, we're going to have one for manufacturers. We're going to call it auto manufacturers. a little bit get rid of that uh give it a slug for which will also uh be the default um kind of permalink structure but you can override that and then we're going to associate that with our car and i think that's again all i need for um our manufacturers higher no we didn't have oh we this one we did have hierarchical and that's should be good for auto manufacturers. And then one more taxonomy we'll create models. And associate that with our car post type. And that is not hierarchical and there we go. So we should have our three taxonomies and the models. Let's make sure all these are showing up. Uh, models. Yep. We have, again, I pre-populated some of this data so we can move along quickly. Um, and it shows, yeah, the different uh, Wrangler versus Prius, et cetera. And then auto manufacturers. Um, I must have, let's see. That should be populated with, so I must have missed a field there. Sorry about that. I must have auto manufacturers, auto manufacturer. Did I? Oh, yeah. There we go. I missed an R so that we weren't saying, there we go. So again, I, I created all these, so we have some working data to get going with. So we have our post type, car, cars, uh, our taxonomies, which we can organize um, our cars by. So actually let's go in and since I already created a lot of this content, let's just look at, um, Again, this looks blank because there's no field uh, groups associated with it, but here we have a Nissan Versa. I assigned the Nissan manufacturer. Um, I assigned the condition as a used car versus a new car. Uh, the model is Versa and just added some a featured image for the item. So if we, let's see, I guess, what our progress looks like so far on the front end without um, custom any custom field groups registered yet, just the, the post type and taxonomies. Um, so yeah, this is um, already showing our cars post type in a um, archive format. And so that's good. And it's using the featured image to um, set that up. And then when we go into a single car, um, we get to see the uh, make and model in information. And again, some information isn't over here because that'll be custom field populated once we set that up. But here is the, the form I was talking about with Gutenberg. That's the only reason I have Gutenberg enabled just to kind of display this uh, form to give you a realistic uh, appearance to what this car site might look like. Um, and again, this will be field group information, which we will work on next. So we have a pretty good start. We got our car post type. And if we even, if we use this, um, I set this navigation up so we can 
drill down into used cars, which is again, using this condition of used cars. So really we're just uh, linking to the archive for um, that taxonomy. And it just, again, shows an archive based on used cars. So let's hop back over and create our field group. And I think we have, I think I, yeah, I grouped it all as one here. So ACF, um, you're allowed to create field groups. So you can, there's kind of a different approaches to organizing your field groups. You could, the way I am going to do it right now is create one field group with lots of different um, nested subfields and different fields that'll, that'll be enabled in certain areas. But you could certainly um, break each one out if you wanted to as a field group. Um, it just might create a little more overhead for maintenance, but yeah, it, it's, it's, there's different approaches and different workflows to all of this. So what experiment and see what works for you. But, um, for this one, we're going to jump in and create our first field group. We're going to call it, uh, vehicle details. And before I, before I start creating all the fields, I'm going to actually jump in ahead to the location rules down at the bottom here. And this allows us to say what we want our field group um, to show and associate with. Um, as you can see, there's all these handy dandy options, which are super flexible and useful. Um, for us, we just really want the default it uses, but we want to assign it to our car post type. And as far as presentation, I think I modified a little bit here. This, um, you can experiment here and, and even read on the documentation of what these uh, presentation options do, but it's just kind of when you go to create a new car and these fields show up, it's giving it um, different kind of appearance, like the seamless versus the standard WordPress meta box appearance and how where these fields um, show on the screen, the priority of, um, so you can mess around, like, you know, you could say field group one, have a priority of one and show up near the top and another field group have a priority of five and show up uh, probably lower down. So I think I, let's see, for our case, we set this to seamless. And then I think the, oh, and below fields. Those are the only, uh, and then that's actually it for those two settings. So let's go ahead and start creating our custom fields. Um, the first one I'm gonna create is a listing date. And I'm gonna use a group field. And this just kind of allows us to nest some subfields within it. And we're gonna call this listing dates. And I'm going to um, provide a, f I mean, typically ACF auto populates this. I'm quite sure. Yeah. So if you just tab in, um, but I recommend prefixing your um, field names. This will help kind of prevent um, any uh, clashing as, a, as yeah. So if you create another, you know, if you keep listing dates and later on have some other post type and create another field group. You don't want to clash these names. Um, and plus prefixing helps uh, just kind of associate it with like a, a client or a code base and keep your code base organized. So I just prefixed it demo listing dates. And then within this field, it's just a group field. So we're going to create some subfields and we're going to use a date picker. And this is still using ACF free. And I'm just gonna bring over some of this. We're gonna call the first one, listing start date. Uh, again, I'll prefix it. And for the format, I think I left it default here. We can actually expand this out a little bit. 
I increased the font size just to make it easier to read. Return format. Yep, I left that alone. Week starts on. Um, trying to remember. See, so for each of these fields, you have tons of options and flexibility. Um, I think that was it for that field. I'm just trying to make sure validation. Yeah. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing for an end date. So I'll just copy that and collapse. And we're gonna say add a new field and we're gonna do date picker. We're gonna call this end date. So this would be a means if you have, you know, other folks in here maybe listing their automobiles or managing this site and you wanna say, you know, list this automobile from this date to this date, you know, you could use this information to make sure that that is how, um, gives it those kind of bookends of when it's published and available for public consumption, I guess. So, yep, yeah, that's, we have a listing start and end date. And then, I think I, yeah, I chose, these are different uh, layout formats you can have for displaying this group of fields, um, block, table, and row. I'm gonna choose it, uh, put it to table. And that's listing dates. So, and then I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight more fields that I'm gonna create. So I, I'm probably gonna maybe speed along through some of this. Um, but let's see, had a field. We're gonna do a price and demo. This will be the price of the, the automobile. Um, and I think that's it for price. Oh, I think I have a prepend. So under presentation for price, um, just this is just in the editor area of when the user is entering the price, it'll prepend a, a dollar sign just to give them a little bit of a heads up of, as to what the, the data type is kind of expecting there. And then that's price. Then we're going to create a, let's see, a number field. And again, you can go through all these field types on ACF, uh, ACF advanced custom fields.com. I always say ACF um, resources and it goes into each of these um, field types. So there's really useful documentation here. And we're going to call this, this is going to be for mileage. And I think that's it for that. Drive type, we'll do Add another field, um, we're gonna have drive type. So two wheel, four wheel, and this is gonna be a select. Um, and we're gonna say drive type. Prefix it. And then this is where you would put your choices. So I'm just gonna bring this over. So when user enters the data. These are the options they'll see. Um, I'm not going to sign a default value and I'm going to say return the return format. This is how our information when we, when we, if we need to create display logic, um, this is where we would account for that. Um, I'm going to set it to both array. Um, and I don't want to have select multiple. I just want them to select one of these options when they're entering it but you can, you have that option as well. Um, let me just double check, make sure I'm not missing anything. Yep, that's it for drive type. We're gonna do miles per gallon, and this is gonna be another group. And then I'll probably um, pause there and look for questions and uh, maybe leave some of this these additional fields um, for a later date. I think you get the idea at this point so we can start seeing um, what things look like on the front end, but I'm gonna add some subfields here for city and highway mileage. Let's 
And actually we can just, I'm not using the, we could just duplicate that and make it a little easier on ourselves. Um, highway. And I think that I'm gonna save that as is. Um, I left off like two more fields that I have um, registered on the, the full site. But now we have this all associated with our car post type. So we cut back over here and I'm gonna go into a car that was already created and we'll start to see where all this information kind of was entered. Um, so this is our date picker for starting and end date, uh, the price, the mileage, um, the drive type, city mileage, and highway mileage. Um, I think I might have misnamed some of my slugs for these because I think I, most of these I had already populated with information. So but I can go back and fix that in a minute. So this is where, again, like the display of the appearance of these, where these fields show, um, we just, we kind of went over that when I was registering the field groups. I'll just open this into a new tab here so we can continue modifying. Um, let me see which ones I might have missed. I have vehicle price, vehicle mileage. Yeah. Okay. So I see already. The discrepancy there, demo listing dates, demo via, yeah, for some reason I, this is where planning comes, comes uh, is very critical to, to planning and naming, even these having a naming convention. I did via, demo vehicle price here, which is um, a little odd, but, and then demo, I think I did vehicle here too. Drive type, miles per gallon. Move that off of there. I think we're getting closer. Let's see. So if we come back over to this existing one and refresh, yeah, we'll see some of this data. This is where I already uh, populated some of these items. Um, so looking if, well, yeah, let's, look at creating a new car. Um, I don't have a <laughs> car up. I'm just going to kind of make up a car here. Uh, I forget how to spell DeLorean. So bear with me. I'm going to set some kind of random just to give a demonstration of how you might create a new uh, entry here. Mileage 12057. And I think the mileage isn't um, set up yet with the proper slug. I think I mismatched there. I'm going to assign it to some of these. Say used, used car, uh, model. Uh, or actually, that's going to be what um, you can just grab one of these. And I don't have an image. Well, I can probably just grab one from here. And we'll publish that. And then we can view this. And that was the one field group I haven't set up yet. That's where the gallery um, we have. You can associate images. Um, if I have time, that's a, actually a really critical piece I'd like to cover. But I want to answer some questions real quick. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Elisa, uh, Damon, do you create a sitemap view of your data? Yes. I mean, I think that's what, yes, that's what I'm kind of uh, saying with the organization before establishing these relationships of distinguishing, should I create a custom post type? You know, what should I create a taxonomy or, you know, what type of data do I want to um 
establish these relationships. So it's good to kind of map this out, you know, for, for this one, I kind of walked us through it. The cars was the custom post type. Um, and then the taxonomies we used to group the cars with models and manufacturers. And then the field groups, we kind of assign this meta information to the car with. So can you activate ACF Pro on the site by site basis in a traditional multi-site instance if each child site is using? Um, I think I might, yeah, I don't think we're, we're I, I'm not covering really multi-site today. I don't think I have the answer to that. I know I have a feeling one of the ACF team members is probably on and if they might be able to answer that in the chat. So Mike, um, maybe, Keep your eyes on the chat. Um, hopefully they can get a response to you, but I can also try to follow up um, about that. I think with multi-site, yeah, you, you just have a single license and you can activate it and it covers all the, the instances in there. But I'm gonna keep going and just, let's see, let's just get this uh, gallery in here so we can see. Actually, I'm gonna do colors. Let me fix this miles per gallon. Do, 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 do. Demo city. Yeah, that's where I, so I did MPG and then MPG. Just going to save that. And then we're going to add another field. And we're going to use, um, for this, we're going to collapse. We're going to do another group. No, not a button group. Group. And call the colors. So this would allow us, you know, data entry folks to say, this is the color of the car. And again, I used a vehicle. And we'll have subfields in here. Text. I'm just going to establish one of these because there's a lot of interior, whoops, interior color. And this will all be in the final code base. So you can kind of glance at the JSON files that, um, and even download the code base and just kind of import it to a local site and play with it. So one more field, we're gonna call it, we're gonna use the color field type, color picker. picker. We'll just call it interior, demo interior, color, X. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it. I won't do um, exterior for now. Let's save that. And then one more, I'll do the, the gallery here so we can see that in action. We'll use the gallery field type. Oh yeah, that's so. That's actually why. Um, that's actually a pro field type. So that's where we would reach for ACF Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that. And when you activate ACF Pro, it automatically uh, deactivates the free version for you, which is nice. And so go back, pop in here. Trying to speed along here. Sorry about that. So we can wrap things up. Demo, gallery, uh, again, I did vehicle, and the return format's fine. I did upload it. Yeah, I think that's good for now. So now, so this is the, the final site. Sorry about that. I messed up one of my meta, meta field namings again, and this is kind of the end goal here. And what this looks like when we go into edit the car, we have all our field data information here. 
And then you can see the display logic. I'll just jump into that real quick in the site editor. Uh, while that's loading, I'll hop back and just get some of these links up in front of you. So you have access to the, the demo site is autocarfinder.wpenginepower.com. And the code base is at GitHub, Colorful Tones, Autocarfinder. And the documentation is here. And since I went fast, the playback can come in handy. Um, that'll be on YouTube shortly after we're done here. And I highly encourage you to subscribe to our newsletter. Um, and let's see, let's see if that's up now. Yep. I don't know why. So if we go, and now I'm in the site editor, I'm just showing how we display some of this logic on the, um, so if we go to single car, um, we actually have a block showing the gallery, which is registered in our code base. So that was one piece of custom functionality I have here. We have car details and a car price and a phone number. These are all um, unique ACF blocks, which is actually a pro feature so that we can display these items using a block theme. Again, you could use a um, classic theme and avoid having to create blocks like this but um, I wanted to do a block theme. So I created these blocks to display this, these uh, field group post meta information. Um, and that's essentially what would go here. This is the car de details block. And let's see, I think we have this wrapped. Yeah, we have the car details. Um, and in here we have the are de are the details and I'm trying to remember where I surfaced the price. I thought that should be replaced over here. Oh, maybe the the archive view is probably a better. But I know we're at time. I'll hop into that real quick and then I'll look at questions. Hang out for a minute or two if you want or um, jump off. And I'm going to try to stick around and answer a few additional questions because I know it went fast and I got um, caught up on a few things. But here is the archive car template. I think this gives a better overview of how we're using the query loop block. So we're, we're uh, looping through our cars post type and we have the title. Here we have the car price block, which is the ACF block that we created and our ACF car details block. And we just drag and drop those into our template where we want them to dis display them in this query loop. And that's kind of, yeah, I mean, that's the, the beauty, beauty and flexibility of ACF blocks right there. Again, you can do that in classic theme still as well um, with ACF information. So hopefully that was not too disjointed folks. I apologize. And um, if there are any other questions here, let's see, how do you insert fields into a template? Um, so ACF has some very useful uh, functions called get field and the field, um, which allow you to uh, drop those into your templates if you want to display it that way. And that's all actually documented in here. I think, uh, yeah. So yeah, you would use get field and the field depending on um, if you want to, how you're outputting that data. And then you would just reference the slug um, of your field that you want to display. So in my case, the, the that's why I was using the demo underscores um, for my naming convention. I can just uh, call those that slug. It would be good to know what you gain with using ACF Pro. ACF, uh, yeah, Sam provided a link there. Great, thanks, Sam. Um, you get some really uh, awesome fields, including ACF blocks. You know, you're allowed to just you're able to create these custom ACF blocks, but you get the gallery field, um, relationships, 
and uh, the repeater field, which is very handy, then you can um, repeat, you know, have a, say, like, net, have a number of items that a editor can, essentially, you're kind of like, yeah, I hate to use the word clone. I was about to say clone, because that's actually a, another field type. Um, but you're allowing the user to group kind of these fields and add a set number on top of that. <laughs> it's a bad explanation, but you can create a, a group of subfields, which can be repeated again and again and again. Um, and then you also get the flexible content field and option pages and the gallery field and the clone field, which, um, yeah, so you can create a, a field group and then clone it, which kind of uh, makes the, the the management of your field groups a little easier. So I think that got that covers most of it. Um, Sam, did you see any other questions in the chat that I might have missed? But I think I hit all the Q and A. Yeah, I think you got the the gist of it. There was one question about inserting fields into a template, but I think you might have mentioned to check out the documentation. Yeah, that was the the git field and the field. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's probably under functions. All is probably yeah. So git fields, git field, um, and the field just displays the logic. So um, here's a good kind of example in your template. You can say the field, and then this is where. Um, let me crease this. This is where you would reference the slug. So in our case, um, let me just grab one of these field groups. You could, you know, if you wanted to get the copy of this price, that's what you would place um, in the field here.